everyone that just left and went to the restroom, you can come on back in here now. Sanctuary monitors, when it's time for the word, all that's over. The word trumps everything. If it's an emergency, then let them express that to you. But we're not walking during the word. We're not walking during the word at all. And I'm going to ask the staff not to do a necessary walking as well. Somebody put your hands together. It's time for the word. The word of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Don't pat a cake like it's McDonald's. Come on, somebody. Give God thanks for the word. Thank you, Jesus. Angelus Harris has birthed this camp with a very appropriate affirmation. We say, praise the Lord, and the campers say, Understand that when you say he is worthy, then you are personally saying that you believe that God deserves great merit. Understand that when you say he is worthy, you are saying that you understand and you have experienced his excellence. When you say he is worthy, then you are saying that you know that he is exemplary and there's none like him. When you say he is worthy, then you are esteeming him above any other force, any other life, any other power. And you are opening your mouth and you are saying before heaven and hell that I will honor him for he is a righteous God. Now, if you understand what it means to say God is worthy, Open your mouth and decree with an understanding. Praise the Lord, campers. Praise the Lord, campers. Praise the Lord, campers. For his excellence, for his righteousness. Praise the Lord, campers. For his greatness.
at somebody and say, yes, God is worthy. Well, it's Camp 2015. And my sister and I were talking about the campgrounds. And we confess that we're struggling. But as I was in the hotel room, <laughs> Daddy just began to speak to me and he said, baby girl, it's a new generation. And this new generation is on new campground. He said, but I'm still the same God. He said, this, this generation may experience it a little different than you. He said, new ways, but same power. He said, the campgrounds aren't the same. And this is what made me praise him. He said, I am your sovereign father and I will never change. Ha! My glory will be seen for this generation on these campgrounds. Come on and put your hands together and give God great. God is moving and I want to move with him. Glory to God. Glory to God. And as every year, this choice handmaiden of God has received the, received the theme from her father. Listen, church, listen. To listen means to have an attentive mentality. To listen means you have intention. To listen means you have a reason. And to listen means you have expectation. Look at the person next to you and ask them, do you have intentions? Do you have a reason? Do you have expectations? Tonight, the Lord has chosen for us to listen. And he is giving us an example of one who made choices. Tonight, we must listen. We must learn of the consequences of his choices. If you will turn to the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 11 through 24, a very familiar biblical illustration. The companion scripture will be John 17, verses 11 through 15. Again, St. Luke 15, verses 11 through 19. 
St. John 17, verses 11 through 15. I'm going to ask that we stand as we prepare to release the word of God in this cultivated atmosphere. And the word reads along this wise. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. <clears throat> and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain had filled his body with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, ah! anybody know what it's like to come to yourself? You ought to give God a praise right there. Ah, ah you don't sound like you ever came to yourself and didn't even know where you had gone. You ought to give, gosh, oh, I'm not. He said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise. Look at somebody and say, it's time for you to get up. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. John 17, starting at verse 11, and let's read that together. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Read. Thank you. Reflective reading. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his field to feed swine. 
I pray not that thou should take them out of the world. Ha! Look at somebody and say, just because you get saved, that don't mean that you don't have to deal with the world. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. As you reach out and come in contact with that person next to you, let's get ready to go to God. That what we must listen to tonight, that as we sit here summoned by God to listen to this prodigal tell his story, there is something every one of us has to hear. His voice must become personalized. As you reach out and take that hand, I want you to take a few minutes, those of you that are filled with the power of God. No, don't just take that hand, but touch their lives. There's something they've got to hear the prodigal say. Mm, you gonna pray against every force from hell? Hush, I'm not. That will try and block their ears. You gonna pray against the stuff that's going on in their lives right now. This is not just a young person's thing. This is everybody in the room. This is me. This is the adults. We all got to hear what this boy has to say tonight. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. As you get in contact, feel what's going on. Touch means to feel. Touch means to stir. Touch means to move. There's some stuff that's got to be stirred. There's some stuff that's got to move. The prodigal must speak so until we will not be the same. Come on and lift that light to God tonight. Come on and lift that life up. Lift it up. Lift those hands up to God. Open your mouth. Now daddy, we need you to do it tonight. There's a reason this boy is talking to us. Hush, I'm back. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There's some stuff we got to listen to. Shebe, come on, no, 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 shut. Ha! <laughs> 
hold on, uh, hold on, uh, hold on. Uh, we believe you. Uh, we believe you. Uh, we believe you. Uh, now open your mouth. Uh, if you believe victory, uh, uh, shut up. Uh, speak what you believe. Uh, hey God. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, open your mouth. Uh, speak uh, what you believe. Uh, if you believe ha, the prodigal ha, is going to be made free, ha, open your mouth, ha, shout freedom. Ha, hey, ha, ha, da, 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 ha, yes, ha, yes, ha, speak it, ha, speak it, ha, speak what you believe. Ha, what do you believe he's going to do? Ha, what do you believe is going to happen? Ha, yes, God, ha, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Put your hands together and begin to bless it. I didn't say just clap your hand. Open your mouth. Freedom. Freedom. Coming back home. Have a shunna. Being restored. Come on, Zion. Come on. It is so. You may be seated. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. <laughs> but that thou shouldest Keep them from evil. That's what makes him worthy because he is able in the midst of so much evil. He is able to keep his children from evil. Get this. Get this, everybody in this room. Evil is all around us. But the God we serve is able to keep his children from evil. Ah, oh, just lift your hand and say, Daddy, I now believe you can do it. Open your mouth and say, Daddy, keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. Come on, open your mouth and say, keep me from it. I don't have to be a scared of it. I don't have to be a slave to it. Open your mouth and ask him right now, keep me from evil. It's all around me. It's even in me. I don't hear nobody asking. I don't hear nobody. Come on. Keep me from evil, daddy. Keep me, keep me. Open your mouth, young people. Keep me, keep me. Ha, open your mouth. Ha, keep me from. Oh, I feel it. Ha, I feel it. Ha, I feel it. Ha, I feel you saying, but can he really do it? Ha, oh, yeah, he can do it. Ha, he been doing it ha, for as long as he has been God. Ha, the devil didn't take over nothing. Ha, God allowed it to happen. Ha, he's been taken over from evil ha. all of God's existence ha. evil ain't no threat to God I know
know. I know. <laughs> I hear you. You're saying, my PJ done lost her mind. <laughs> evil? I can be kept from evil? I don't have to be consumed by evil? Look at somebody and say, yes. She's saying it with a sound mind. So, prepare yourself. Sit tonight. Engage our minds and listen as the prodigal is coming forth to speak. The prodigal will tell his story of his encounter, his enticement, his surrenderance to worldly vices. But we must be vigilant. <clears throat> we must prepare our hearts to listen. We must be sober. We must be on red alert. Because tonight, as you prepare to hear his testimony, you will leave this place knowing that there is no pit too low. The reality is sometimes we become prodigals. The reality is sometimes the prince, the princesses, we all end up in a pit. But look at somebody tonight and tell them just believe that you can come to yourself. As we look at this text, very briefly, we might look at this prodigal from various views. We might have conflictive perceptions about this younger boy who went to his father and said, give me what's mine. One might view it as, well, he was really trying to be more thoughtful about his future. He was trying to show his father that if you give it to me, this is the only way that I can begin to be independent. But then there is the other train of thought that said he asked for it because he was trying to get away from being restrained. Whichever view you take, listen now. As he says to his father, I am ready to be my own master. Listen to his voice as he is saying, I can be a better self somewhere else away from all of this. I ask you to listen as I introduce before we go into the depths of the story, two words that I must interject. One is the word deception. The other word is self-deception. Put the two together and you got the deadliest combination. Deception denotes tricky stratagem. 
It's the ruse. It's the hoax. It's an imposter, a false identity. But self-deception is the act of deceiving oneself regarding their true feelings, thoughts, or motives. I ask that through the spirit you allow yourself to glean perfect understanding and listen as he tells of the snares of his own self-deception. And just in case you are still debating about this prodigal intention, I say to you, the moment he lost the honor of his father, he had fallen into a trick. The moment he opened his mouth and he said to his daddy, give me my inheritance. <laughs> the moment he was demanding something <laughs> that his father was giving him out of love, <laughs> he had fallen into self-deception. Hear him, hear him say, give me what's mine now. He is removing, going against appropriate time. Going against the appropriate time for the transference and going against removing himself from the logistics from his father's gracious love and his care. Self-deception allowed him to be enslaved physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And the word says, after many days, after becoming intoxicated with the resources of his will and his carnality, after being removed from all influences of purity, the word said he wasted everything that he had in riotous living. <laughs> oh, hear me, young people, old people, every people. <laughs> mm, being destroyed does not happen overnight. <laughs> Ah, uh, it starts with one decision and one action, and it is a, a perpetual state where it is a continuous, continually making bad decisions because you're listening to the wrong feelings and the wrong emotions and, and the wrong thought. The Bible says that he was unrestrained and he went against everything that he was taught. He went for every worldly vice there is. And I say it's not hard to imagine this prodigal because sitting in this room, there are a number who are now engaging in worldly devices. Sitting among us, we have a clear understanding of what this prodigal was doing. And the word said that he began riotous living. That means that he was seized by every diabolical spirit. It means that an influx of evil he gave himself over to. It means that there were some things going on in this boy's life and time huh, that he was never supposed to be exposed to. Huh? It means he looked over and he saw some stuff huh, that he knew daddy
daddy had told him not to touch but something was going on in him oh I know we're in the room tonight you're being besieged by things that you shouldn't have to deal with I'm so sorry young people I'm so very sorry that many of your children will grow up with two mommies and two daddies I apologize because we have not been as forceful as we should have been some time ago all over the country the gay and lesbian force took over downtown all over the world we saw them all over Chicago when I would go to preach I would see them in the marketplace and I stood there and I heard myself asking the question but where are we why aren't we across the street from them why aren't we right beside them but young people even if we failed there is a God who will not fail you there is a God who made you a promise and he made your babies a promise that even though they're hearing two mommies and two daddies there is the seed of the righteous inside of you and your babies can be protected from all evil open your mouth and give this worthy God some worthy praise I feel like fighting tonight I feel like fighting the devil open your mouth and give God worthy praise Look at somebody and say, God can keep us from all evil. Look at somebody. Go get somebody. Stand up right quick. Go get three people. Look them dead in the face. Go and tell them, God can keep you from evil. I want to hear you say it. I can't hear you. I want to hear you. Put it in the atmosphere. God can keep you from evil. I can't hear y'all. God can keep you. Young people, you're not saying it like you believe it, but I'm going to keep putting it in the atmosphere. Hush, shut up. I'm going to chew it up and put it in your mouth. I know you can't digest it. But I'm chewing it and putting it in your spirit. God can. You may be seated. Listen. Can you hear him speaking? Hmm. He is now speaking out of his anguish because he has gratified his flesh. He's now speaking because there's always a cost. I learned this some time ago. You can choose your sin, but only God can choose your consequences. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You can choose what you want to do, how you want to do it. I'm preaching to myself, y'all. I'm not just preaching to y'all, cause my thing may not be your thing. Sometimes it's a thought. Uh huh. I know. Sometimes we beat up on the young people, and we say, mm mm 
Mm -mm. These young people, what's wrong with these young people? Well, I'm going to give you permission to point up here to me. Because some of y'all have had to stumble over your parents. Some of y'all has had to stumble over your youth leaders. Some of y'all had to fight in the church where you should have been saved. But I say to God, raise up a generation that will fight because when we fail them, they can know God never fails. God never fails. God never, never, never put your hands together and give him a worthy praise. Come on, give him a worthy praise. Yeah, we failed you. Yeah, we jacked some of y'all up. But I am a product of coming out of a jacked up environment. My mom and daddy jacked me up. But look at what God made of a jacked up little girl. Somebody open your mouth and give, come on and praise him. Come on and believe the word. Come on and open your mouth. Come on and give him glory. He's able. You stop that, Ryan. You stop that, Ryan, and you sit down. Because that's the I know what she talking about praise. Ah, somebody open your mouth one more time. Come on, let's fill this room with young people who believe that he is the God that can keep us from all evil. All evil. All evil. So now, hmm, he's gotten what he wanted. He wanted to be away. He wanted to be alone. So now, he is, in fact, in a life of estrangement. Everything around him is strange. There's nothing familiar. He's in a state of isolation. He's divorced from his father and he's separated from his God. He has joined himself with any and all forms of the lowest desires of various degrees. And after he has spent everything he has, hmm. As if though spending all of his inheritance wasn't bad enough. The word says a mighty famine arose in the land. <laughs> oh, but the thing that I love about my daddy is he knows just what to do to get his children back where he decreed them to be. And the word says, after he had spent everything, uh-huh, what he did was the prodigal kept spending the money, but he wasn't doing anything to get an investment. So he just kept spending he just kept spending, spending, thinking that it would never be all gone. Well, that sounds like this polluted grace doctrine that's going on. 
that you can do anything that you want to do. <laughs> this boy kept spending money and he wasn't doing anything to save money, but he kept going and writing checks and writing checks, uh-huh, and getting those what we know today as NSF notices. You know, your check bounced. You didn't have no money to put back in there, but you keep writing checks. So what happened was the account got closed. The boy went into bankruptcy. But listen to me, young people. This bastardized doctrine of grace <laughs> that because you've been baptized in Jesus' name <laughs> and you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and you speak in tongues <laughs> and you think that you can willfully go out <laughs> Not y'all. I think I can willfully go out and keep, keep, keep pulling from the account. And it's getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower as it is in the natural. So it is in the spiritual. God said, my spirit will not always strive with man. He said, after a while, I will turn your tail over to a reprobate mind. Don't you believe that you can pick up the stuff of the world and perpetually sin? And Jesus died a horrible death. I believe in grace. But I believe the grace of God stays with me until I come to myself and I turn around, look at somebody and say, grace is not sent for you to pollute it. Paul says it so plainly. Shall we continue? Read that, young people. Old people, all people. Shall I continue huh, to walk around here huh, full of evil, huh, just as mean huh, as I can be? Huh, just mean, 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 mean. Just mean, 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 mean. The church don't preach about that. Huh, but a mean person huh, will bust hell wide open huh, just like a hooker will. Shall we continue? The scripture says, and as they slept, the enemy came in. The enemy, the evil of our culture has crept into our churches. Until now, you don't have to do nothing to be saved. You can do anything you want to do. We can look any kind of way. Our children are tattooing everywhere. I am so sick and tired. Parents, I'm praying that God will give you the boldness. You ain't wearing that mess up in here. Hallelujah. The company that I work for, I was interviewing the other day and I noticed the woman kept looking at me. She kept looking at my arms. She kept looking up and down. And I'm wondering, I'm getting a little uncomfortable. Why is this woman looking at me? Periodically, she would look down under the table. And so, when she did it one too many times, I said, excuse me, is there something wrong? She said, no, Paulette. I just have to tell you, you are at the top of the list for this internship. She said, because I've been trying to see if you got any tattoos. And that tells me something about your character. What's Ha, oh yeah, ha, I want to rep represent ha, my daddy well. Ha, 
tattooing is of the devil. It's demonic. It's evil. It's contaminated. It's darkness. It's satanic. And you just opening yourself up for the devil to come and take possession. Look at God. Lift your hand and say, Daddy, keep me from A mighty famine arose, and the sun is in want. And the Bible says he made another decision. And he said, I will join myself with a citizen from another country. Here we see further loss of his identity. He is remaining under circumstances that was never supposed to be a part of his life. But the moment he chose, he made a decision. He was not forced to do it, but he made a decision to touch the swine. And the decisions that he is making is coming from within himself. Ah, it's a wise person that will know this one I can't handle by myself. You got to know when you got to call backup. And the greatest backup I know, sometimes it's not your mama or your daddy. Sometimes it's not your pastor or your youth leader. Sometimes it's not your best friend. But the backup that I know will never fail me is God, my almighty father. I say to him, God, you got to help me right now because if you don't help me there's another me inside and she don't want to do what she knows she's supposed to do but I've learned how to open my mouth I say father help me right now do you need God to help you from evil do you want to be kept from evil? Are you being tempted by evil? More importantly, it's evil inside of you. Open your mouth. Lift your hand and say, Daddy, no, I mean call him like you really need him. Say, Daddy, keep me from evil. And so, he decided that he was going to go into the pit with the swine. Now, the thing about choices, once we make a choice, whether it's positive or whether it's negative, once we choose, we turn that central part of ourselves. And it can never be the same. When you make a choice unto righteousness, then you cannot willingly live unrighteous. If you make a choice to sin, then you cannot walk in intimate fellowship with God. Regardless to what they may be preaching, the Bible clearly says, no man can serve two masters. You got to love one 
and hate the other. So once this boy decided to go down there with the swine, then he made a vile choice. When something is vile, it's wretchedly bad. It's highly offensive. It's repulsive. It's disgusting. Don't you know that every choice you make, every choice we make to do evil, that's where the devil is taking us. He's taking us into a vile place. He's taking us into a depraved place. He's taking us to a despicable place. He's taking us to a foul place. He's taking us to a filthy place, a wretched place place. And the Bible says that after this boy had feigned himself, that means after he greedily was in the pig pen eating the husk, the husk is the worthless part of a food. But the husk is what the poor people ate. But the Bible says that while he was down in the lowest depths, drowning, that's what makes God so worthy. I don't know. Is there anybody out there? Do you know what it's like to be drowning and there's nothing you can do to help yourself? Oh, I, I do. Is it just my testimony? The song says I was sinking deep, deep, deep. Deep. Ha. This girl was under the bowels of sin, ha. but the master, ha. he shed it of the sea. Ha. He heard me ha. when I didn't even ask him. Ha. He heard me ha. before I went down in water. Ha. I know y'all don't believe that, ha. but he heard me ha. when I was trying to get away ha. from my crazy mom and daddy. Ha. I didn't know nothing. Ha about uh, praying the way y'all pray. Uh, so I was angry. I was mad. Uh, but I did. Uh, I looked up to God. Uh, and I didn't use church language. Uh, and I was angry uh, because of the things of my life. Uh, he should have struck me dead. Uh, but he heard me. Uh, and love uh, it lifted me. Uh, listen y'all young people. He's ready to lift you. He's ready to bring you out. I don't care what you have done. Lift your hand to God and say, Father, help me get out of this. I need you to say it like you mean it. Do you want to get out of it? You don't even have to feel bad. But if you want to get out of it, lift your hand and say, Daddy, I know you can and I know you will. Right now, help me. Help me. Help me get away from evil. Y'all just saying words, but the, but the moment you say it from a, from a, from a personal place, some kingdoms that have been built up in your life are going to begin to crumble. Some forces that you've been dealing with are about to be overturned, but they just not going to be overturned. Ha, they're going to be destroyed ha, forever. Ha, this demon ha, that you think ha, you got to live with. Ha, I'm the saying to you ha, that God ha, is ready. Ha, God ha, is waiting ha, for prodigals ha, all over this room ha, to be set free. Ha, open your mouth. 
Open your mouth and give him a worthy praise. Open your mouth and give him a worthy praise. A worthy praise. And so, hear him say, uh, hmm, <laughs> asking the question, uh, he's down there now, uh, in the lowest depths of sin. Uh, he's saying, young people, uh, TM campers, uh, I, the prodigal, uh, left my father's house, uh, and I did uh, what I wanted to do. Uh, he's saying, I, the prodigal, uh, am now dealing uh, with the consequences uh, of yielding uh, to my own deception. Uh, he's saying, now, uh, the prodigal, uh, I'm questioning myself. Ha, I'm asking myself a question. Ha, how ha, did I get here? Ha, and what ha, am I doing here? Ha, hear him say, ha, I know ha, what I'm doing. Ha, I'm in the pig pen ha, eating hot. Ha, I know ha, what I'm doing, ha, but what I can't figure out ha, is what ha, am I doing here? Ha, I know ha, what I'm doing. Ha, you know ha, what you're doing, ha, but what you need to ask ha, yourself ha, is what ha, am I doing here? Ha, I know ha, what I picked up. Huh. But what huh, am I doing here? Huh. The prodigal huh, is saying, huh, I huh, know huh, I don't belong here. Who said? Who told you that God wasn't great enough huh, to save you from yourself. Huh, who told you? Huh, has shut up huh, that when you get in sin, huh, he can't come huh, where you are. Huh, even if you don't want to, huh, I know it because huh, he's done it for me. Huh, open your mouth. Huh, come on, y'all. Huh, say, Daddy. Huh, just about ha, to believe ha, that you ha, can keep me ha, from all evil. Ha, open your mouth. Ha, say, Daddy, ha, come get me. And so ha, the scripture says, Huh, that down huh, in there, huh, he begins huh, to ask the question, ah, huh, uh, huh, what huh, am I doing here? Uh-huh, huh, uh -huh, huh, in the midst huh, of his own self-deceit, huh, in the midst huh, of his own mental struggles. Huh, how many of y'all, huh, you're sitting out there Ha, with some mental struggles. Ha. That don't mean you're crazy. Ha. But let me tell you what a mental struggle is. Ha. You know you're not supposed to do something. Ha. But there's a part of you ha, that wants to do it anyway. Ha. Can somebody get free enough ha, to say that's me? Ha. I know I shouldn't want to do it. Ha. But there's another side of me. Ha. Saying, go ahead ha, and do it. Ha, that's a mental struggle. Ha, but if you believe ha, that God ha, can keep you ha, from your own, ha, from your own self craziness, ha, open your mouth ha, and say, Daddy, ha, it's me. Ha, it's me. Ha, it's me. Ha, standing in the need. Ha, I need you. 
Help me. I need ya. Help me. I need ya. Got to have ya. I need ya. Keep me from me. I need ya. Open your mouth. Cry. Cry unto it. I need ya. I need ya. Keep me from me. Keep me from the evil one. Keep me from my evil way. I need ya. Lift your hand. Tell them I need ya. And the word said, and he came to himself. next to you <laughs> and say, you know what? You are about to meet the real me. I'm just going to say that again. And the word says, while this boy had taken up riotous living, Shama, doing anything, everything imaginable, had sinned so long, so far away. But the Bible says, while he was eating among the swines, <laughs> he came to himself. <laughs> he came. Open your mouth. If you just sit there, you're going to miss it. But those of you who are getting ready to come to yourself, hey, lift your head. Open your mouth. Say, Daddy, 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 give me. We got to do this because 
I feel I feel the wind on my soul. I feel the wind is about to blow. One more time. One more time. That's it, y'all. Daddy said, that's it. That's it. I can't go no further. When you decree this thing right, when you say, give me myself back, I said, you're going to have to fight. But immediately, some of y'all said, oh, but I don't have strength to fight. I, I'm too weak to fight. <laughs> this is why God is so worthy. Because <laughs> he knows where all of us are in this room. <laughs> but when I said, get ready to fight, <laughs> daddy said, no. <laughs> the fight <laughs> isn't how they think it is. <laughs> But the fight huh, is the fight of your praise. Huh. I'm going to praise him because huh, I expect him to do it. Huh. Hey, huh. are you ready? Huh. Are you ready? Huh. Open your mouth. Huh. Say, Daddy, huh. give me huh. myself back. Keep those hands up. I'm getting myself back. I'm coming to myself. I lost. I lost her. I lost him. But I'm coming. Come on. Fight with a praise. Fight with a praise. Take us to the praise. Take us. To the praise, I praise you. I love you. I lift you up. I love you. I praise you. I lift. Come on, come on. He's able. He's able. He can handle it. You can't handle the evil. But your daddy can handle him. Praise him. Praise him. The angels are fighting for you. Praise him. The war is being fought. But prodigals are coming back.
just waiting. I'm just waiting. Because I'm looking all over the room. And I'm seeing some prodigals. Experience. The experience of coming to yourself. Now, you can keep praising them. Don't stop. Don't stop whatever you want to do. Because huh, God is in the atmosphere. Huh, the word mixed with praise huh, is the baddest combination huh, against the devil. Huh, don't stop praising. Huh, don't stop clapping. Huh, don't stop dancing. Huh, some of y'all got a right to praise him. Huh, you know God brought you huh, back to yourself. Huh, listen, huh, I need some people huh, to testify with me. Huh? Old people, huh? young people, huh? middle-aged people. Huh? How many of us huh? are in the room? Huh? And we know huh? that God huh? brought us back huh? to ourselves. Huh? Jump to your feet. Huh? Open your mouth huh? with me. Huh? Jump huh? and give him glory. Huh? Jump uh, and give him praise. Uh, jump, uh, jump, uh, jump for joy. Uh, jump for joy. Uh, jump uh, for joy. Uh, he brought me back. He brought me back. He brought me back.
I told you. I told you to listen to his story, church. Listen, church. Listen. Because while you're listening, God is delivering. He came at just the right time. Look at somebody and say, this night is the right time. Hashama. When the prodigal came to himself. He came. Nisi. He came. Into clear. Perfect. of who he's always been. Even with the swine. Oh, that's what makes him worthy. Because huh? even though he lost his identity, his daddy never took it away. You ought to worship him.
into his own view. Sweeties, y'all just need to see yourself for who you really are. When I saw who I really was in God, it gave me power to fight against my own carnal self. Because I started telling myself, that's not who I am. That's the imposter. I am the righteousness. some very wise people, very wise mentors of the church world. And they have said to me, Evangelist, you, 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 you can't keep going around the country. You, you, you telling too many personal things about yourself and, and, um, well, I think you're just going to hurt your ministry because you're not using wisdom. And I said, well, some of my greatest messages are born out of my victories as well as my defeats. So you know what I said? Daddy, I'm just gonna trust you. Cause I don't think you've taken me through this. For me to stand before young people, old people, my people. So I'm gonna tell y'all, God's saying that in my spirit. The last time I had just had enough of life. I said, really? Why can't I ever get a break? So, God, son, can you handle this? Your godmother went back to her old ways, growing up with my mom and daddy. And I went, can you handle God, mama? And I found me a bottle.
the evil of my alcoholic father. Ryan, that DNA. But as a woman, my daddy makes more sense than he ever had. Because daddy fell in love with a woman who refused to love him back. It's amazing how things make a whole lot more sense as you get older. But as I was laying in my living room floor, crying and weeping and opening this bottle, I heard my daddy sing. I am. Ha! The righteousness of God. And I want to talk to the children of the house. And I want to tell you that daddy never took your identity. That never took identity, never took anointing, never took call, never took purpose. Believe me, y'all, if he had, Pastor Tanya, Pastor Sion, and me, Wave your hand, Ingram. Wave your hand, Mama. Oh, come on, my generation, wave your hand. If God had taken it, we wouldn't be here. And the same God who has bought us through our evil, he kept holding us. He kept loving us until our knees got stronger, until our back straightened up. That's why we can carry y'all so long, because we learned how to fight our own evil until we came into clear view of who we are. One final thing. When he came into clear view, <laughs> that's what we're getting ready to pray for. Huh? We're getting ready to pray huh, for clear view. Huh? What does it mean to have view? It is a particular manner of looking at something contemplated. What are you contemplating? What are you expecting? It means to look specifically. What are you looking for? As I close, hear the prodigal son. As he said, y'all know the end of my story. Before I could get home, <laughs> before the devil is a lie. He's made you think you got to be perfect. He's made you think that God can't handle you. But this boy said, before I got to my daddy's house, when he saw you, Mary, huh, coming into view, huh, when he saw you, God's son, huh, he's looking at y'all right now. Huh, as you're coming huh, into view, huh, as you are beginning to see huh, who you really are, huh, 
daddy ha, is getting up off his throne. Ha, ha, and daddy ha, is coming to meet you. Ha, no, the devil is a lie. Ha, you ain't got to work hard at this. Ha, because when that boy repented, ha, he instantly said, ha, I'm getting up out of here. Ha, the devil can't hold you ha, against your will. Ha, when you make it up in your mind, ha, I'm coming out of this. Ha, I am leaving this. Ha, he had the power. He had the power to walk in it. Ha, and God gave him the power ha, to walk out of it. Ha, say, I had the power to walk in it. No, say it, say it like a soldier. Huh? Say I had the power to walk in sin. And I got the power to walk out. And tonight, I'm walking out. The word says, and when his father saw him, he couldn't wait. Oh, can't you understand? God can't wait. He just can't wait for you to choose. He just can't wait for you to say, I'm coming back home. And the scripture says that the father went and he ran to the boy and he hung his head on his baby's neck and he kissed him and he said, he said, go bring me my robe. Listen y'all huh? don't try and wash yourself huh? just come tonight huh? in the presence of your daddy huh? come to this altar huh? and let daddy wash you huh? the bible says huh? the father said huh? bring me my robe huh? and the robe huh? represented the father huh? taking off those filthy clothes huh? You don't have to worry about changing your clothes. Huh? Just come huh, to your daddy huh, and let him huh, restore you tonight. Huh? I feel the power huh, of restoration. Huh? Huh? Come quickly. Huh? Come quickly. Huh? I come. Huh? I feel the power huh, of restoration tonight. Huh? No, 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 Restore. Restore. Just ask him. Restore. Restore. The father took the ring off. The ring symbolized power. He gave him the fatted calf so he would want for nothing. Now here's where you gotta have faith. You gotta have faith that as you're standing at this altar tonight, when God restores you, he will give you everything you need. As you lift your hands, matter of fact, all over the building, I don't want anybody sitting because you're not going to pull on these that's on this altar tonight. I'm not going to fight with y'all that's at your seats. I'm going to command you to engage. If you think you don't need it, then I want you to look at these kids at this altar. But you will not sit.